was your reaction when you first had it put on? Uh, I didn't really know I was moving it at first until I had no idea what I was doing and just kind of moved by itself. I'm kind of excited that I could have it now. I've been waiting for like ever. How much has life changed for you? Uh, a lot. I can't really write anymore that good. I have to write with my left hand. And I used to play softball, and I don't play softball anymore. And I mean, I was right-handed, so a lot of things changed. Where did you go to school? Hoover High School. Hoover High School. And how long ago was the accident? It would be a year on January 20th. The, uh, the first surgery, as you're having to come to grips that, that your life is changing, um, Obviously, I would imagine you're a beautiful young woman. That, that must have been a very emotional moment for you to have to deal with. Um, I don't really remember my first surgery. No? Hey, are you just, I mean, you're young, technology, you embrace it, you can you know, like the rest, with the rest of us, but, but still, can you believe that this, just by simple movements, I mean, are you, what's your reaction to this technology? I guess my question is. Um, I'm pretty amazed by it. I, when I, I never really knew what it was until I had to have it. So. so you're a ball player, athlete, you, and so you go through training. All right, what, where are you in your training level? What, what are you up to doing, and how much more do you think you can go as you, as you train more? Um, I haven't really learned that much about this device yet. Hopefully I'll learn more soon, but um, I kind of learn pretty easily, so it shouldn't take that long. What is it like to feel the hand closed but not have sensation in the fingers, to, to feel your fingers on palm? Um, I don't really feel anything. It just feels like I'm wearing my cosmetic hand. I just don't really feel anything. The difference between this and the cosmetic hand, though, that's pretty dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> what, have you been able to do anything um, normal since, since trying this? Um, I picked up stuff with this. Like, I picked up the ball and I picked up a cup and I grabbed somebody's nose <laughs> <laughs> and grabbed somebody's hair and I shook somebody's hand and that was about it. What about getting dressed? I haven't got dressed with it yet. Again, is that a part of training? It's just, I guess, baby steps? Get, yes, get, baby get, steps. They, uh, what is uh, uh, So many things. Maybe just get dressed. That might be the ultimate. But what is the ultimate thing? once you get proficient, you want to get to? Is it, do you have one thing in mind? Is I really want to do just by myself with this, uh, totally independent? Um, I kind of want to learn how to throw a ball with it. <laughs> <laughs> that softball coming right back to you, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, is that, do you almost feel like a sense of normalcy now that, you know, with this technology that you can almost kind of live a normal, feel a normal existence with that, with, with the cosmetic hand? Um, I feel like, I'll get back to my normal life soon, and hopefully I will. Can you touch the thumb to the index finger on there? Yes. Would you be able to hold a pencil at this point, do you think? I tried, and it's kind of hard. I have to get used to it. Yeah, you're still going to end up writing mostly with your arm as opposed to with the hand, I would imagine. Probably, yes. Yeah. Um, what's the strength like in the hand? Do you have any idea about how much of a grip that you actually have with it? Um. I mean, I can't break anybody's hand with it if I shake their hand. <laughs> we're not talking Terminator here, we're talking about you. Um, I don't really know the grip yet. It's pretty strong, I guess. Could you pick up the ball for us? Yes. What is that like for you to be able to see that in your hand? It's kind of weird. <laughs> Because you have the sensation on your thumb, right? Yes. And does that not feel natural to just be on the thumb without feeling the other fingers around it? it it's a little weird. Yeah, a little uh, weird. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> how, did you, how did you feel knowing that you were going to get this and that the media was going to be coming in? Do, do you feel, I would imagine that you would feel very self-conscious. Is that how you're feeling right about now? Um, I'm kind of shaking. Yeah, a little bit. But no, not really. Okay. Have, have you worn it to school yet? I'm not allowed to yet. You're not allowed to yet. Mm, I don't want to break it or anything. I'm not used to it. 
Right. When do you have it? At, at certain points, just at night or? Just at night in the evenings. I would imagine you don't sleep with it. No. I have to let it charge at night. Yeah. Okay. So you're predominantly using your left hand still. That's mm -hmm. it. Is this, Haley, is this one sense you're trying to send a message to other folks who might have a similar situation, be it, you know, hand, leg, or whatever? The, there, there's technology out there that you can have as normal as life if you want to just hang in there? Um, I would like to send that message, but I'm not a very good speaker, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're correct. <laughs> This was this was donated. Yeah, yes. To you. What uh, what do you want to say to the people here and the people that had uh, you know had part of this to uh, to give this to you? It's pretty amazing. I don't really know what I'd do if I didn't have it because I've been trying to get back to my normal life, mm -hmm. and this is going to help a lot. And I don't have to go to the doctor or come back here all the time. So. Well, it looks cool. As it, you say yeah. that. <laughs> On the record. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the glove. There is a cosmetic glove that is going to come with that, um, which is going to match the pigments in the skin, that kind of thing. What does that mean that you'll be able to have something where it won't immediately draw the attention of anybody that, that walks past you? It's going to feel a lot better from because people have been staring at my hand a lot since the wreck, so it will feel a lot better if people are not staring at me. So you have been very self-conscious about the Yes, I hide it a lot, and then I get in trouble with my parents and my friends <laughs> and everybody else. Because they're supporting you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the nice thing, I think that this is what everybody else is trying to get onto, is that the nice thing about where we have evolved in technology is that if you have looked at some of the prostheses that were out in the lobby um, to what you've got right there, you know, I mean, it almost feels like we're in this science fiction zone. But the bottom line is is that, you know, what we're doing is is that through this technology that this, this service provides here is that we're giving people a chance to have normal lives and feel a sense of normalcy. What is the value of that for a young person that has a whole life ahead of you? Uh, that was a long question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I really, I'm kind of like speechless. Mm -hmm. I'm just really happy that I finally got it. I've been waiting since the wreck, basically. Did you do a lot of research on it before? Not really. My mom did and told me everything. I don't read, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're a 16 year old girl, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> there you are. Hey, Lou, is there anything else that we haven't asked you that you want to get out there tonight? Anything at all else that you want to say? Not that I know of. I know that as a parent, we always want the best for our kids. And uh, when you found out that there was a, a grant out there for this prosthesis for your daughter, what was that like for you? Well, when we first realized that the, the insurance was not going to pay enough to do this, you know, we really didn't know what we were going to do. And then Randy came to us and said, you know, we have this, we have this foundation that takes care of kids this way. And, you know, do you want to do it? And I said, of course I do, you know, because she needs this. She's she's young. She's not 80 years old and can get by. She's got a whole life ahead of her. So I talked to her dad about it, and we decided that we needed to. There's no reason not to accept it. And what's your reaction now, seeing that everything's working out, and she is going to be able to have a normal life? I'm just amazed. When I first saw it, you know, I, I was like, I, I just I had no words. I posted videos on my Facebook page. I mean, it was, I'm just totally amazed the things that she can do now. I mean, she was pinching her brother's nose and she's picked up staples and, you know, for like five staples together, tiny little things. And so it's just, she just has to get used to it and she'll, can do, she can do anything she wants. And just tell us about her courage, her strength that you've seen in your 16 year old daughter. Well, she's, she's had a lot in her life to deal with and she just amazes me. When this all happened, you know, of course, I'm freaking out completely because my child has been in this horrible accident and um, I didn't know what to do and you know she was very upset when she finally came off some of the drugs she was on and realized what was you know what was really happening she was obviously very upset but she just took a little bit of time and then she just said okay let's go on talk to me about the day that you had to start discussing further surgeries in order to remove those additional figures 
Well, actually, when the accident first occurred, the doctor had said that these two fingers were okay, the pinky and the, the ring finger were going to be salvageable, but that these two were completely crushed and there was no way to save them. He showed me an x-ray. It was like translucent, the bones, because they were crushed so much. And he came out with an x-ray and showed me what they were, and he said, there's just no way I can save those two fingers. And I said, well, you know, you have to do it do what you can do and then it was about five hours she was in surgery and he came out and told me what he did he took he saved the pinky and wired that and he took the pieces he took this piece this piece from this finger and this piece from this finger to create this one and it was all one piece and that's how we ended up like this because he wanted to give her this ability but then in the long run it was just kind of migrating inwards and it was not going to do what he said, said it would do. So, you know, we talked about it and like Randy said, Haley said, if they're not going to do anything, if they're not going to work, I don't want them. Because they would have gotten in the way of this. We wouldn't have been able to be as nearly as successful with this if we had those two fingers just sticking out there. So she just said, I don't want them. If they're not going to do anything, let's just get rid of them. Have you had a chance to hold her hand? This one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, actually I haven't, now that you asked that. Do it for me again. Scroll your daughter's hand, how does that feel? Feels good. <laughs> now that she has this, and, and knowing that, you know, that this is still gonna be a long process, this isn't gonna be something that she's gonna master overnight, um, what is your role at this point? The, the role of encouragement? Um, you know, how do you keep her from getting frustrated that she's not progressing as quickly as she probably is going to want to progress? Well, she is really not one to get too frustrated, really, with things. It's more going to be just encourage her, encouraging her to, you know, put it on. Right now, she can just wear it in the evenings. Put it on in the evenings, just, just to have it on and just to get used to it, and and just to encourage her. And I know she's going to have some frust some frustrating moments, and all we can do is just encourage her. At the end of the day, could you? Did you have ever envisioned that something like this would be available in her life in order to try to bring back a sense of normalcy? I didn't really think about it. You know, when we first, those first couple of days in the hospital, the surgeon said, you know, there's prosthetics out there. We can find all kinds of things for her. And at that point, I really didn't, I didn't know that something like this existed. You know, the most I've ever seen is the $6 million man on TV when I was a kid, you know. But then when I started researching, and like Haley said, I did a lot of research. I looked at different, um, different systems and everything. And then Hanger was recommended, so we came here and he helped us look some more. But I just never imagined that something like this w was out there. You just don't think about it. And for the charity that stepped in and was able to help pay for this, what do you have to say to, to, to those wonderful people? Thank you. Because without it, you know, she wouldn't have this this ability if she didn't have this hand.